I let these things get out of control. I, I formed an education team as soon as I was sworn in. And as, uh, this will probably be a headline tomorrow because I know the news journal is probably watching this. But mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm sick and tired of everybody pointing the fingers at the teachers all the time. It's not just the teachers. There's an administrative body. There's a government body. Mm -hmm. When I was served on joint finance, mm -hmm. the Department of Education went from millions to billions of dollars to, to run over a billion dollars. So the, take, the state takes full responsibility, too. They need to take responsibility mm -hmm. and stop blaming every, you know, the school districts and the teachers. The Department of Education needs to say, you know what, you know, we blew it. We should have been monitoring this a lot longer. Mm -hmm. uh, your trips to Washington, D.C., uh, going down and talking and many meetings of which you've gone uh, to reach out for help for the city of Wilmington. Will you mm -hmm. tell our residents about some of that and uh, how you see that and, more well, I guess, importantly, how's it all coming together now? Well, it forged a great relationship with uh, ATF. Uh, it forged a great relationship with, with the FBI and a great relationship with Chris Coons' office and, and, and Senator Carper. Mm -hmm. uh, they've worked with us. Uh, you know, years ago it was like pulling teeth with the feds and the, and the locals coming together, mm -hmm. but we know we're all in this together. And we went, met with the Department of Justice. Uh, you know, now we're going to receive some, some funding and some equipment uh, that we didn't get before. And they were saying, you know, what took us so long? So now we're here. And I said, well, we're here now. So, so let's work with us. We met some of their, their, their grant writing people who will assist us and guide us through every step mm -hmm. of the way mm -hmm. to write grants. We're going to send our grant writer down to meet these people on a, on a first name Fantastic. basis so they'll be connected, interlocked. And when, we, when something's coming to us, they will tell us, what, you know, this is a good thing for Wilmington because they monitor what we need because mm -hmm. we, we put a list of mm -hmm. things out, what, what we need, and, and they will guide us in that direction to make sure we get that funding. Will we receive everything? No. But we're to the point now where we're all together on, on a first name basis and, and we're working very hard together. Mm -hmm. I tell people, you know, don't come to me with the okie doke. I, you know, if you don't want to help Wilmington, then move on. Mm -hmm. I, I don't need people mm -hmm. patting me on my back telling me you have a tough job. Yeah, I have a tough job. Well, well show me the money. Help the city out. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? If you want to help That's me, right. don't be patting me on my back and telling me I have a difficult job. I mean, come to me and say, this so is what true. we can do for you. Mm -hmm. You know, we're the economic driving engine of, of, of the state. We are the largest city in the state. 30,000 cars pass through the city on a daily basis. And the number that go up in I-95 and, and 495, I can't tell you, the 12th busiest train station in the nation. At one point, we had 26% of the state's workforce. You can't mm -hmm. tell me that Wilmington's not paying its own way. Mm -hmm. Help us to uh, understand also, as you go forward, economic development. Uh, something that's going to create jobs, uh, maybe some construction, something, something. What's kind of going on economic development? Well, we have, we have four projects right now that, that, that uh, Pacini Poland, the, the condominiums, that's going to be the construction jobs are already there. Uh, Shipley Street, 9th yes. and Shipley Right. Uh, there's a new anchor uh, that's going to be coming very soon in the area of 13th and Market, and I can't talk about that right now, but mm -hmm. it's going to be construction jobs there, and it's going to be 25 permanent jobs and 15 part-time jobs. Mm -hmm. uh, there's uh, three other developments that's coming through. Uh, that will be long-term construction jobs, and probably the total between the three projects will be 300, uh, and there'll be you know, new, new residential for, for people to move in and new living and more retail space. Mm -hmm. And it'll be permanent jobs in the retail space. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that, that I said during the course of the campaign, we need to bring more people into the city of Wilmington. Uh, the people in an urban area is the heart throb of a city. It's like the blood pumping through the heart. Cities need people. If you don't have people, businesses won't move in mm -hmm. because once they do a market study or a feasibility study, it mm -hmm. shows that the income can't sustain them. Mm -hmm. This is the reason why they won't come in. Mm -hmm. But when you have more people moving in, people will come in and spend because they have disposable income, and then you'll have businesses that come in. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm pushing for Ruby Tuesdays downtown. I'm pushing mm -hmm. for Victoria's Secret downtown, Brooks mm -hmm. Brothers. I'm pushing mm -hmm. for all of these things. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's a few other stores I can't think about right now, but I'm pushing for all of these things because this is where people like to shop. This is what people like to do. We've done some market surveys. Mm -hmm. And you, you have to give people what they want, not what you want, just because you like the name. Mm -hmm. you, you do market studies. You give people that are working downtown and beginning to reside downtown what they want because they're the people that will come here. You know, I, I might like uh, uh, Macy's. If people, just because I like Macy's, that doesn't mean everybody downtown likes Macy's. Mm -hmm. And you have mm -hmm. to give people what they want because they're mm -hmm. the folks that's going to move in these condominiums and these apartments and mm -hmm. spend their money. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about well, let's the waterfront. Let's not forget the, the arena. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh -huh. I, 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 we're, we're looking at that arena, too. We need money, but we're going to work on it. I, I tell you, 
my name's not Dennis P. Williams. I'm, I'm going to get that arena for the last <laughs> thing I do. I'm telling you. Let's talk about the waterfront. I am, uh, not the waterfront, the, uh, 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 lost the names. Port. Said the, the, the riverfront. The riverfront. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm tying my mind's mm -hmm. running with the port. Uh, I am, Mayor, fascinated with what has taken place down there thus far, uh, the possibilities of other things that can happen down there, uh, the new hotel that mm -hmm. just opened up. Yes. Uh, fantastic. Will you talk about that just a moment? Well, the new hotel it's is- It's out of sight. I, I, I tell you, I, 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 you, you know, I tell folks, Mayor, uh, you know, hey, I'm from the hood. I live in the <laughs> hood, a good community of Southbridge. But put a reference on any way you want to call it. But it, it, it's a very good and fine community. A lot of good and decent folks there uh, that work, retired, and everything else. Everybody's not over there. And then a lot of these communities, northeast, south, and west, involved with drugs or cutting up or violating the law and things of that nature. Uh, but uh, I, I'm one who just don't get down there anywhere near as regular as some of the others that use it. Uh, but each time I go invited to something or going down to meet with someone to have lunch or dinner or whatever for business, as I leave, I'm fascinated now that I go down pretty regular now. I've uh, been a member of Planet Fitness for several years and gone up mm -hmm. Kirkwood Fitness and used to love 14th and Market. Mm -hmm. Go every day and then they close that up on me. <laughs> so the one up on Naaman's Road is so far up uh, that I, I hardly go there. But I'm going down more regular early in the morning. I find myself leaving there six, seven o'clock in the morning. Sometimes we talking on the phone a little mm -hmm. bit and I'm riding all around through there. And I mean, I'm like a little kid seeing all oh, what in the world is that? And, you know, and whatnot. Uh, talk to a young man out there that was sweeping up uh, one morning last week uh, in front of the movie theater. And uh, I asked him, did they do matinees and whatnot? He said, yeah, we do them every day, this and that. You know, well, I'm thinking they don't do matinees. I said, well, I can sneak down here and go to movies sometime <laughs> just to take a break, you know what I mean? But uh, fantastic, fantastic. You want to talk about the Well, you sound like you pretty moment. much covered it, but oh, I, I tell man, you. It's, it's, it's it, out of sight. It I is a good you. thing. Uh, last night, uh, my <laughs> wife and I uh, went to the comedy show down Extreme Pizza, but earlier, uh -huh. earlier in the day, we had lunch at uh, Harry's, uh -huh. and, and we spend a lot of time down there. You get a chance to look at the, uh, the river and the, the high-rise that are built there. Mm -hmm. uh, we mm -hmm. go to the movies down there, and then, you know, some of the restaurants down there, the, the Big Fish, and sometimes just taking a stroll there. It's, mm -hmm. it's very beautiful, and, and I like baseball. The walkway. Oh, yeah. The walkway. A little exercise. I take my grandchildren Fantastic. to the Blue Rocks, and we spend mm -hmm. a lot of time there. And mm -hmm. you know, what what more better? You get a hockey team down there, and, and, and a minor league basketball team in the future, mm -hmm. and a stadium that draws people. Mm -hmm. um, I say it's a community within a community. It's it's give Wilmington a major major shot in the arm. Yes. Believe me, yes. it has, mm -hmm. and it has put us on the map. And also, the National Conference of Mayors. I'm I'm working on getting a. Mike Brzezicki to do a presentation to over 900 mayors in San Francisco in June to, oh, to show them what we did with, with our riverfront to give mm -hmm. other cities some ideas, mm -hmm. plus to expose the city of Wilmington a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Chief, I didn't mean to shut you down or oh, shut no you problem. out, That's all right. but just get into <laughs> it with the mayor and just so much going on and whatnot. Yes. Help us out and bring you back in the fold. Uh, our uh, police department manpower size is at what? Uh, I think I heard some talk about a new recruitment class or something that may be coming down the pike or whatever. Help our viewers understand where we are with that. Yes, our authorized strength on the police department is 320. Uh, mm -hmm. Currently, we're uh, below that number. We're probably about 295. Mm -hmm. And like you stated, we are currently in the process of um, processing for an academy, which we're uh -huh. about to hire about 30 uh -huh. individuals. Mm -hmm. um, we are in the phase of uh, doing backgrounds and polygraphs right now. Uh, they have chiefs interviews coming up and then there'll be a selection and this class will start uh, the first week of December. Um, that's gonna help get us back to our authorized strength. However, we know whenever we uh, graduate a class, we uh, lose people through attrition, so we expect to lose an officer a month. So we are in the process of working with the mayor's office and city council that mm -hmm. we can continue to do a hiring process and have people in, in the waitings so that when we get to Fantastic. a number that we can uh, keep Fantastic. people moving through the system. And we're. We're recruiting strong in the city. We're recruiting outside the city, but we um, need to make sure that we reach out to those individuals who want to be police officers, who want to get into this profession, that mm -hmm. we have officers who are willing to be mentors to keep them on the right track mm -hmm. and bring them along through the process so they know what it takes to come into a police agency. 
and we're trying to bring them to our police agency. We're, we're not trying to send them somewhere else. Right. Fantastic. Fantastic. And, you know, being a police officer, mm -hmm. he, he, I, 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 I applaud the chief for this uh, mentoring program. You know, as, as a 21-year-old uh, man, I woke up one day and had all this power. Uh, and I think that when you're young like that, someone needs to tutor you because you can get a little crazy. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I'm going to be, <laughs> I'm gonna be quite, <laughs> use the word quite frankly because I got a little crazy. You uh -huh. know what I mean? You wake up and say, oh, my God, you know, I, I'm a policeman, you know. And you go through the academy, and then the next day, after about six or seven months, you're on the street, and you realize, wow, mm -hmm. you know, this is deep. But you do need mentorship, and I think that's a good thing. Yes. Hicks Anderson uh, Community Center, what's going on over there, Mayor? Well, there was a study done, and as you know, it's going to be a fortune to, to, to probably try to repair. Um, I don't know at this point, uh, uh, Herman, I'm, I'm, I'm about ready to see if we can build a new one or, or what we can do with that, because I think, you know, the patch job is over with. You can only patch mm -hmm. up so much. Some of the mm -hmm. engineers have said you put additions on, mm -hmm. and then we, we take it from there. But, you know, I'd like to see us probably retrofit that place if we can, and, and if it doesn't cost us a fortune. But if it does cost a fortune, I'd rather just just knock it down and build a brand new center. Uh, okay, Mayor, any closing comments? Phone number to the mayor's office. Again, repeat that open house and when it's going to start mm -hmm. and kind of share that phone number with our viewers as I get ready to take a break and allow you gentlemen to leave. And okay. Chief, I'm going to come to you for any closing comments as yes. well. Mayor? Well, the mayor's office number is 576-2100. Uh, starting this Wednesday, we'll have our first uh, open door for the mayor. It's uh, 4 o'clock in the afternoon until 8 p.m. And then the following week, it'll be from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. And uh, 12 a.m., I'm sorry. 12 p.m., yes. Hmm. We, uh, we've had the open door in the mayor's office, but we've now extended it to 8 o'clock at night because some folks said that they work and they can't get in, and we want hmm. everybody to have an opportunity to come in and sit down and discuss things with us. And, hmm. and I say, Herman, we're on the move. We Sounds are. good. I, I see it and I like it. And uh, help me one other thing before I go to the chief. Uh, the big ball that's coming down the pike here, uh, I think it's November the 16th. Uh, any information you have on that? I, I'm a little confused and fuzzy on it. I heard some talk on, on some of the earlier programs. Uh, I know it used to be a mayor's ball mm -hmm. going back some time. Uh, is this any way connected with the mayor's office and the mayor's ball? Is this something else different or something all tied in together? What, what, what do we got here? Well, you're probably throwing me for a loop now. You're talking about the uh, Thanksgiving ball for the seniors? Thanksgiving ball. It's going to be down Chase Center, yes. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, uh -huh. the mayor's office uh, funds part, mostly all of that in the city. funds okay. quite a bit of it. Okay. And yes, it will be uh, put on by the city of Wilmington. Okay. Uh, constituent services will be running that. And I'll be down there, and, and all the seniors that want to do the Soul Train line, we'll, we'll do it together. <laughs> all right. I'll need to soak in the tub the next day in hot water. <laughs> right. Have to go get the Epsom salt, as they used to say. <laughs> Chief, come on in your own way and kind of close out on anything you might want to share in closing. Yes, sir. Um, again, I appreciate you having me here tonight to talk Thank about you, the homicide sir. unit. Um, one thing I failed to mention is that, um, and reestablishing relationships in the community, we are... Um, running a Citizens Police Academy, and we, can, and we plan to do those more frequently, mm -hmm. again, to build those relationships so that people understand how the police department works. Um, they can mm -hmm. get uh, questions that they may have um, and how the police department operates. This is an opportunity for people to come in. You know, again, like the mayor says, we peel back the layers so people can see how transparent mm -hmm. we are. Um, mm -hmm. As he's talked before, uh, we've done some training with the ACLU. Uh, we look at Fourth Amendment rights and bringing the officers in. And, we try to remind our officers the reason we came here is to uphold um, the con is to uphold the Constitution so that we don't violate people's rights uh -huh. as we go out here and interact. Um, <clears throat> but we will be aggressive in dealing with individuals, but we will do it constitutionally in the right way. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. I want to thank both of you mm -hmm. for joining me here today. And uh, I, I want to say to our viewers that I, I don't know if you can kind of feel the juice on this side of the TV camera. Uh, but uh, I just want to compliment the mayor and the police chief. Uh, you gentlemen compliment each other in a great way, in a great way. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to say, chief, 
the old and the new, you know, <laughs> the mayor <laughs> from way back when, when he was an yes, officer yes. and calling on us some of his old experiences or things that are helpful. Yes. And then you as a part of the new and involved every day and in the trenches as well, the administration, uh, yes. you gentlemen compliment each other very, very well. And mayor, I want to say here publicly that as it, uh, as you begin to look around through the administration as some changes had to be made uh, for the better. Uh, people that I talk to that at the outset uh, would have a frown on their face or what's your boy doing or no <laughs> old crazy kind of comment. Uh, it, it's so very positive now. And uh, I just say keep doing what you're doing. There are a lot of people that do tune in uh, at 7.30 every Tuesday on WDEL when you're on there live or on over the phone, but doing a live interview right across the airways. And they get to hear you talking about the important things, the important issues of our community that touch the heart and souls of our citizens. So for that, I want to thank you. I thank you for being my friend. Look forward to continuing to work and support you. And Chief, uh, you as well. Yes, uh, really wasn't close with you. Uh, I knew of you, always had the utmost respect for you. Thank you. But anything in which I can do to be helpful, you have my support. And as always, as the mayor knows, open door invitation on any program that I may have on Sunday or anything that I have that can be helpful to get the word out, get the message out, uh, you know you have that. Thank you. So with that, uh, I want to thank you for coming to both of you. Uh, I want to take a short break and allow these gentlemen to leave. I'll come back and close the remainder portion of the program. Uh, Stormy, Norman Oliver, if you're sitting out there, somebody get a hold of him. Brother, sister, somebody call Storm and tell him give me a call and leave me his phone number. I need to talk to Storm. And uh, again, a lot of good things are going on. Uh, we're going to be uh, in a very important election coming up right around the corner, November 4th. And I'm asking you to support those Democratic candidates that I know and feel that I should be beating that drum for because you're not in the meetings. You don't know where they are in the criticism. I don't see them here, there. Can't be in two places at one. You can't be out there taking care of that business and down in Dover and the committee meetings and whatnot and, and doing all the important things and then being up here every time a meeting is called. They just cannot do it. You can't be in two places at once. Going to be talking about that. I'll be right back on some other issues. Don't touch that dial. Be right back. God bless you. Tuesday, November 4th, in the general election, re-elect the Democratic candidates who have worked hard for you and your families. Please remember to vote Democrat on Tuesday, November 4th, in the general election. Elect Senator Margaret Rose Henry in the 2nd Senatorial District. Elect Matt Den for Delaware Attorney General. Re-elect State Representative Stephanie T. Bolden in his 2nd Representative District. Re-elect State Representative Helene Kelly in the 3rd Representative District. Re-elect State Representative Gerald Brady in the 4th Representative District. Re-elect State Representative James J.J. Johnson in the 16th Representative District. Again, on November 4th, re-elect the Democratic candidates who have worked so very hard for you and your families. Please remember to vote Democrat on Tuesday, November 4th in the general election. A purple mountain Majesties over the fruited plain. But now, wait a minute, I'm talking about America, sweet America. You know, God done shed his grace on thee. Yeah!
Okay, I hope you appreciated that promo. And again, those Democrats are those that I have worked with, those that I highly respect. They're those that I know that are out there working very, very hard for you, your families, and your community. And I support them and endorse them wholeheartedly. I respect the right for folks to run, or one wanting to be a candidate. And God knows one has the right to do that. And if they're not a felon, they have a right to be considered. And we as a citizen under democratic and a democracy and a democratic process, excuse me, one man, one vote, we have the right to decide who we want to land and give our support to. And I respect that wholeheartedly. Uh, a lot of talk has been said, a lot of things that uh, have been put out. Uh, I, I can't honestly say by uh, any of the candidates that I'm thinking about that are the opposition, if you will, wanting to be reelected, I don't see them falling in that negative category. Uh, if it is, it's things I don't know anything about. So all due respect for those on the other side that happen to now be gone from Democrat to Republican on the ticket, re Republican ticket, and are asking for your support. So I'm not talking about any of them. Uh, I'm talking about some negativity and things and the way things have been distorted and taken out of context that really uh, kind of beats the Democrats up in the state of Delaware, city of Wilmington, Newcastle County. And uh, a lot of that that's said in the manner in which it's rolled out on the Republican hour is not so in a lot of cases. Uh, the fact that Democrats have controlled for a long time, that is indeed a fact. Uh, the city, county, uh, and state government. That is indeed a fact that we've uh, had our congressional delegation that is now an all Democrat since uh, Mike Castle uh, was defeated going back a few years ago. That is indeed a fact. But what you're not being told about the longevity is the fact that uh, one, for those that are credible, that learns to work through that process that makes friends in those governing, governing bodies, they are the ones, they are the ones that usually rise up through the ranks. They work hard in their districts. They get reelected. They create some longevity, longevity along the way, and they end up in very good leadership positions. Such be the case of each and every one of those that I just showed you on that promo. And what I'd like to do, Ivan, is to go off with that, if you will. So just let me know a good two minutes two and a half minutes, and from there, take me out, because I want to show that again, and I'll quickly close. So just let me know where we are with that, and I'll close out. Uh, again, Norman Oliver, if you're uh, out there, somebody, his brother, Cisco, somebody get to him, Ampy, tell Norman, give me a call, I need to speak with him right away. Once I go off the air, uh, I want to say that all of these shows, such be the case with this one, with the mayor and then the police chief, will be on my Facebook, Perhaps tomorrow uh, there'll be a link on Twitter where you can see this show and all my other shows as well as on YouTube. Uh, I do this to continue to get a message out. I hope that some of you that are still watching Live Lease Access Channel 28 got to see uh, again for the third time 
the interview I did about two weeks ago, two, and, uh, two or three weeks ago, with those very same candidates. I wanted you to hear from them as to the role they play, the seniority, the chairmanships they have, the leadership roles that they're in, and how important that is. And let me just say, lastly, on this subject, I'll be back here tonight at 9 p.m., 9 to 10, and I'll, I'll pursue a lot of this as well. Uh, the fact of the matter is, and I think Stephanie T. Bolden hit the nail right on the head when she spoke and said that the process, the process is totally different down in the General, Delaware General Assembly. Uh, city of Council, you have an ordinance, read first and second, third time you're voting on it, you're done with it. Down there, you put in a bill, the bill gets a number, the bill gets uh, assigned to committee, and you got to work to get it out of committee. Can't always get it out of committee, that's a problem. You cross that hurdle, you take it to the House, put it on the agenda of Senate, and you got to get it voted on, enough votes to pass it. Then it goes to the other House, House or Senate side. They can amend it, and then they got to go back and forth to vote on the amendment, knock it off, and or accept the amendment. But all that's the process in the legislative process. These folks that I'm supporting are very experienced there, and uh, they're doing a fantastic job, and I ask you to seriously consider them. Let's try to play that uh, promo again on the way out, if I can, Aubin. And again, I'll be back here tonight, 9 to 10 p.m. Look forward to talking with you. God bless you. Tuesday, November 4th, in the general election, re-elect the Democratic candidates who have worked hard for you and your families. Please remember to vote Democrat on Tuesday, November 4th, in the general election. Elect Senator Margaret Rose Henry in the 2nd Senatorial District. Elect Matt Den for Delaware Attorney General. Re-elect State Representative Stephanie T. Bolden in his 2nd Representative District. Re-elect State Representative Helene Kelly in the 3rd Representative District. Re-elect State Representative Gerald Brady in the 4th Representative District. Re-elect State Representative James J.J. Johnson in the 16th Representative District. Again, on November 4th, re-elect the Democratic candidates who have worked so very hard for you and your families. Please remember to vote Democrat on Tuesday, November 4th in the general election. A purple mountain Majesties. Whoa.